Hi, I'm Larry DeCures, and I'm one of the curators at the National World War II Museum. And today, you're joining us in our Road to Tokyo gallery to take a look at some of the weapons in our Guadalcanal case. Now, these weapons you see in this case are what uh, the Marines landed with on Guadalcanal, the U.S.'s first offensive action in the Pacific, or land offensive action, I should say, in the Pacific War. So. Uh, what we have here, we have the 1903 Springfield rifle. Now, the Springfield rifle was standard for Marine Corps riflemen at the time, so that weapon had a five round internal magazine, uh, fired 30 caliber, and was bolt action. So, in later campaigns, that rifle would have been upgraded with the M1 Garand, which was a semi automatic weapon that had an eight round uh, clip. Also, some of the more obscure weapons you'll see on the Guadalcanal campaign is the M55 Rising submachine gun. Now, the Rising was a 45 caliber submachine gun, similar to the Thompson, um, but it was adopted by the Marine Corps because there just weren't enough Thompsons around at the time. So, initially, that Rising was developed for police departments, um, but it just really couldn't hold up to the harsh conditions of the, of the South Pacific. So uh, you really don't see that M55 rising for too much longer after the Guadalcanal campaign. Um, you can see it has a, a folding stock, and one of the big complaints from the operators of that weapon was when, when you fired the weapon, that stock would fold and close on you. Uh, another weapon you'll see here is the M41 Johnson rifle. Now the M41 Johnson was a semi-automatic rifle that was kind of designed to be uh, a competitor against the M1 Garand. Now the major differences between those two rifles are the uh, Johnson's rifle, rifle's internal magazine. Uh, there was a rotary magazine internally on that weapon that held 10 shots instead of the eight that the Garand held. Now the, the Johnson was um, a, a recoil operated rifle. So it didn't kick as hard as the Garand, but that big uh, internal magazine, that rotary magazine, tended to hold a lot of dirt and was very difficult to clean. So um, a couple of paramarine battalions were issued that rifle, and it doesn't see service much beyond the Guadalcanal campaign. Um, and some of the old favorites you'll see, or, or the old familiar weapons you'll see here, is the 1918 uh, BAR, or Browning Automatic Rifle. Now that's the World War I version of the BAR. Uh, it utilized a 20-round box magazine and was select fire. It could fire semi or full automatic. Um, excellent weapon that, that stays uh, in the rifle squad for the rest of the war and even into Korea. Uh, also, you see in the case, we have the M28 Thompson submachine gun. Now, that's another weapon that uh, stayed in the, in the Marine Corps' uh, table of uh, equipment for the entirety of the war. Lastly, in this case, we have some shells from, for this uh, M3 37 millimeter anti-tank gun. Now, uh, one of the most effective loads for this weapon was the canister round. So at the Battle of the Tenaru River on Guadalcanal, these M3 anti-tank guns fired this canister round that acted as a giant shotgun shell, and it just cut down these Japanese attackers in droves. Uh, well, that's all I have today. I hope you en enjoyed seeing our weapons here in the Road to Tokyo Gallery, and I hope to see you next time.